Hey guys, welcome to my studio. This is Pete with Lovejoy. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that way you can be notified of, notified of my future videos and check out the other videos that are on my page. This channel is geared towards first time and beginner painters. And in today's video, we are gonna be using a palette knife to do the background of our sunset doggy painting. And the palette knife is what I actually use in my own artwork, the artwork behind me, and I use a scraping method. So it's a very untraditional palette knife method. And I'm gonna be introducing you to that process. If you have any frustrations, any anger, anything that you just need to get out of your system, this is the perfect painting to do it on. The scraping method with the knife is highly therapeutic. So I have no doubt that you will end up um, enjoying the process. If for some reason you cannot acquire a palette knife, you can use a piece of plastic, hard uh, scraper plastic, you can use an old credit card, you don't have to use a palette knife, but just something with a um, rigid surface, even one of those paint scrapers from Home Depot will do the trick, so get creative. Um, what you're going to see in the description box below is a link to a supply kit and in that supply kit is going to be a couple of knives to choose from. We will use a little bit of brushwork for our dogs and then our various colors that we're going to be using in today's painting. With this painting and any painting on my channel, I encourage you to swap out colors to change things as you see fit. So just know that you have full permission to deviate from my instruction. That's actually the reason and the point of art. So again, feel free to kind of go off the beaten path and just have fun. Um, yeah, so I think that's kind of takes care of the logistics. Uh, let's go ahead and get started painting. All right, guys, this is going to be a really fun painting and you will be using a palette knife. I do recommend that you turn on your favorite music and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. So like I said earlier, in today's painting, we are going to paint the background with a palette knife. And this is more my traditional um, application for what I use when I paint. And on the knife, you can see that you have a long edge, a short edge, and a little tip. And you can use all three of those edges. And as you can see, I put my two fingers kind of behind that. It gives a little bit more structure, a little more support. And then with some pressure, I'm applying the paint and scraping it in various directions on top of my canvas. And you're gonna do the same thing and just kind of mimic the space that I take up with this color. We are gonna be using very basic colors for the background, yellow, orange, red, white, and blue. And like I said earlier, this is my traditional uh, style for my portfolio and my artwork that I create. And I like how the different texture, and it's kind of really random. And if you did notice, I was working with a textured board to begin with. So I re-gessoed, uh, reused an old canvas. And for my knife painting classes or paintings, this works really well for reusing an old canvas. All right, so go ahead, pause the video, take your progress photo. Super exciting next, we're gonna be grabbing white paint and placing it on the remaining portion of the canvas as well as overlapping some of that yellow paint with the white. And if you want to, you can do what I do in the studio and I let each of these layers dry before I put on the next color. But you don't have to wait. You can actually move right in like I am on the video into your next color. And we're using orange now and again going right on top of the yellow and I am pushing, you know, pretty decent with the knife against the panel or against the canvas. And with that pressure, that's where all those lines kind of come up. And I've taught this class many times and I've seen people apply with the knife um, in very different methods. So whatever method that you're kind of coming up with as you paint, just kind of go with it. This is your style to kind of relax. And you did see I grabbed some more yellow, just kind of going back on top of the area. It does help do a little bit of blending while both of the paintings, uh, while both of the layers are wet. All right, another place to grab your progress photo. 
And again, you can let this dry or you can move right into the red. And with the red, you do wanna be very sparing. That red is a very powerful, very intense color. And it will mix a little bit with your color underneath but I do want you to use a little less amount of paint than maybe you did for your other colors. All right, so another good spot to pause the video and take a progress photo. You're gonna clean your knife off really good and we're gonna make a medium blue. And that's with white with a tiny amount of blue. And it does not have to be a perfect mixture. You can see that I am just dragging the knife across the panel and kind of picking up that color and moving it to where I want. Because I do want some of the white and the other colors to shine through um, where my scrape marks are showing. All right, yep, sometimes it happens. I think I forgot to tape this panel down before filming. All right. And if you're one of my first time painters, hopefully you're not holding your breath right now, but if you are, take a deep inhale and just relax. It is very therapeutic to paint with a knife and this scraping method um, is just nice to put any frustrations or stress that you have into your canvas. And if you even poke a hole in your canvas, that's okay. Just tape it up, keep on going, or get a new canvas. All right. And now we're using white paint still to go over the top. It does do a little bit of blending and diffusing the color just a touch. Um, totally optional if you don't wanna do it and you want more of the darker blue or the brighter blue, go right ahead and I'll leave it as you like. All right, before you move into the next step, I do recommend that you let your paint dry fully. All right, pause the video, take a progress photo. And I do recommend that you let your paint fully dry before you move on to the steps with the brush. So with the brush, we're actually using black paint and kind of putting our curved ground on there. And you can see where I placed a dot on either side of the canvas and then just made a smiley face between the dots. And now I'm actually filling from that smiley face line to the bottom of the canvas with black paint. And again, this is gonna be the ground that our dog and cat and tree will be coming from. All right, you're doing a great job. I'm really proud of you for painting at home. All right, so now we're gonna move into the dog and we're gonna start with simple shapes. So we're kinda going for this oval shape or upside down U shape, and this is gonna be the body of our dog. Then you're gonna use a circle for his head or her head, and it could be a cat. You can change this into whatever you want. And then we're going to put a little um, upside down v, uh, U on the edges for the legs as if he's sitting on the ground or she's sitting on the ground. And then again, you're going to fill in that space with your black paint. And if you're using student grade paint, apply your paint a little bit thicker if it's on the transparent side, or you can apply two coats. All right, and if you need to move down to the small pointy brush to do the ears, pointy ears will be a triangle and if you want a floppy ear it's going to be a square and then you're going to give it a little cap and I'll do that on this ear right here. So make a little square or a box and then you're just going to give it a little hat, a little bill. And for cats you can keep with the pointy ears, the triangle shapes. And yep, we are making our cat a little bit smaller to the left of the dog but same formula. You're gonna make that upside down U shape to create the body. You will do the same thing for the legs and a circle for the head. Uh, the ears really kind of distinguish uh, our pets here in this silhouette version. All right, again, I'm so proud of you for painting at home. Please send me a photo of what you paint. Email that to paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, I'll post your photos on my website, on my social media pages, and it really does make my day when I get those emails in the evening or in the morning, um, and just knowing that you guys enjoy the videos. So thanks again. All right, these guys are looking good, very cute, and nice to see that a cat and dog can get along together. I have a couple of friends that have cat and dog mixes at their house, and some of them do really well together, some just keep to their own space. All right, so I am moving back up to that flat uh, 
uh, flat medium brush and using black paint and just kind of using the edge, the tip of the brush and making these dash marks. And imagine that each dash mark is a blade of grass and you're kind of moving that dash mark in the way grass would grow. So you do want to overlap these uh, dash marks, these blades of grass, have them come from uh, maybe the bottom of the canvas and move up. Maybe there's some wind in your picture. Maybe they're swaying a little bit. Maybe the grass hasn't been mowed or taken care of for a long time, so you can have tall grass. Whatever you feel like doing for your uh, grass line. And as you're doing this, I do recommend that you move away, step away from your canvas, about five to 10 feet away. Look at it from that distance and take a mental note. Is there something you wanna change? Do you wanna add more grass in one area to fill it up? Um, but as you look at your painting from a distance, this is the normal viewing distance for most things in life. So when you're doing something creative, get in that habit of stepping away and observing. All right, take another progress photo before we move into painting our tree. And we're gonna start with the tree trunk. Make it a little bit thicker, there we go. And once you've got the tree trunk on there, you're gonna put the branches. They uh, will be a little bit skinnier than the tree trunk. I do want you to have them going off the edge. And as you get into smaller little branches, uh, that make those lines smaller and smaller. If you need to move down to the small pointy brush, feel free to do that. All right, now we're gonna add the foliage. That's actually a lot of fun. So just using the end of the brush, um, we're gonna kind of do this almost the stabbing method and overlapping those brush strokes. And as you do this, the bristles are gonna spread apart and it creates this nice kind of feathery effect. So play with that and play with your pressure as you get into some of the smaller details so you can get some of those little wispies um, after you've got your kind of core of your foliage on there. And you can make your tree as healthy as you want, as full of branches and leaves, or if it's maybe a winter scene, you don't have to put as many. But again, make this tree your own. You can change it up, deviate from what you're seeing on the video, but just really proud of you for painting at home. So great job, you guys. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day. I hope you had fun, and I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. Hey guys, I hope your sunset doggies turned out really cool and I hope you enjoyed the process with the palette knife. And like I said earlier, I hope you are more relaxed now than you were at the beginning of the process or earlier in today. Um, it's just nice to have this type of outlet in this crazy stressful world. So I hope you enjoyed it. So as you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at paint with lovejoy or hashtag paint with lovejoy. If there's something you want me to paint in the future, or if you have any questions, please leave a comment below or send me an email. Share this channel. That is one of the ways that it is going to grow and help me be more successful so I can create more videos for you guys full time. So please share this and share your creations with your friends. All right, so thank you so much for taking time out of your day to paint, to spend a few hours um, listening to my voice and helping you go through the process. Uh, I'm always honored when you um, are coming to one of my videos compared to the millions that are out there on YouTube. So again, thank you. And uh, until next time, hope you have a great day. Cheers.